What up all my fight fans, so UFC 286 is just around the corner and we got ourselves one hell of a co-main event. We got ourselves Justin Gaethje versus Faziv. Rafael or Rafael, I can't, I'm sorry if I'm saying that name wrong. Faziv, this is a one hell of a fight. This is going to be one hell of a slobber knocker. This is, guys, is going to be a war. I'm telling you right now, I cannot wait for this fight. It's going to be one hell of a great co-main event. Guys, do not miss this. Do not miss this. You already know Justin Gaethje. He is the human highlight reel. I mean, name one boring Justin Gaethje fight. You know what? You can't. I'm not even going to give you time to name it because I promise you, you can't. I can give you all day. I can give you a week and it is, it is almost nearly impossible to name a boring Justin Gaethje fight. The guy has fought the who's who in the lightweight division in multiple organizations. The guy has fought and had so many great fighter of the nights. So many great fighter nights. Like the fights with him when his first came over with Michael Johnson, with Eddie Alvarez, with Dustin Poirier, with um Tony Ferguson. You know, even some of his losses, it was still very exciting. Like he did with um Habib Nurmagomedov and Charles Oliveira. And what how can we not mention Michael Chandler? What a great fight that was. I mean, the guy continues to bring it and bring it and bring it. And then you got Rafa Fazeev. Fazeev, he is just a straight up dog he is he's this up and comer the rising up and comer he is one hell of a beast himself we saw how he was able to handle um rafael dos Anjos. you know yeah he is still relatively new yeah he hasn't fought a lot of tough competition like justin gaethje but still this is one hell of a fight for him to take on he is talking he is taking on one of the warriors of the lightweight division justin gaethje and justin gaethje is taking on this new young rising star that's going to be making a lot of noise in the lightweight division. Guys, I can't tell you how much and how excited I am to see this fight. So let's break this fight down, shall we? Let's do this. So <clears throat> let's go with, you know, the overall fight is definitely, I guess you could say the old guard versus the new guard. You know, you got Justin Gaethje who has been in the game for quite some time. I remember when he came over, um, I guess, what was it? World Series of Fighting, I, uh, something to that nature. And now I think it's now PFL. Um, but yeah, I remember he was the champion there. He fought guys like Melvin Gillard. He's fought in a few other known, well-known names in the industry at the time. And he was a champion there for quite some time, you know, and then he came over to the UFC and fought Michael Johnson in one hell of a fight, one hell of a fight. This guy was just, this guy just went to war. This guy went to war and they, well, these two guys went to war, I should say. And then after that, he continued to make his name and continued to, um, fight on, some other guys, like, again, he fought, like, Eddie Alvarez a couple of times. He fought Dustin Poirier, you know. Then um, he had he had himself quite a few victories and got himself an interim title fight against uh, Tony Ferguson, which got him the victory. You know, if he pretty much put a beating on Tony Ferguson like we never seen, which earned him an uh, undisputed title shot against Habib Nurmagomedov. Now, he actually gave Habib Nurmagomedov a little trouble in the earlier rounds. In the earlier rounds, he actually gave him some trouble. But then eventually, he just got taken down, um, and he was able to get submitted. You know, it was his last fight. It was a retirement fight for Habib Nurmagomedov. Um, but still, nonetheless. And then, of course, you know, Justin Gaethje returns and comes back and gets a few victories over himself. He has one hell of a fight over Michael Chandler. One hell of a fight. It was a really, really great fight. These guys went to war with each other. I know I'm saying that a lot, but it's true. Um, and then he went in there and did some, did some okay work against Charles Oliveira, but it was just too much for him. Charles Oliveira was pretty much able to get his submission in and tap him out. That was that. And that was the last we seen of, uh, Justin Gaethje. I believe it took some time off to get some surgeries done. I think he had to, he had a nose that was broken and such. So he had to get that taken care of and he finally did. And now he's back. And I can't wait to see him fight. Fazeev, on the other hand, you know, he's this rising star up and comer. He has fought quite a few good guys up there. Not someone that's going to be totally 100% recognizable outside of the hardcore ba um, base and such like that. He is going to, he has made um, quite a few fun fights himself. You know, he fights, I believe, out of Thailand, I want to say. Um, and then he, the one, the most notable name on his resume right now at the time is Rafael Dos Anjos. Now, no shame on, on that. You know, like I said, he's a r young rising star. He is definitely making his up and comings. He is making a lot of noise and he is definitely being very impressive right now. So right now this, he is stepping his game up against Justin Gaethje. You know, he is stepping his game really up. Um, cause Justin Gaethje is definitely no punk. Like I said, Justin Gaethje is literally, literally maybe always just a couple fights away from becoming another champion, become getting another title shot. So this is definitely going to be a very fun fight guys. 100%. So let's break this fight down again. How can Justin Gaethje win? Well, as far as what I've seen from Vazib, 
Justin Gaethje, let's face facts. He is definitely a striker. He is 100%. I know what a lot of people say. He is naturally a wrestler. And I know that multiple times. All That's all we've ever heard. But please tell me where we've seen a fight where Justin Gaethje wrestled. It's hard. It's like the guy, as soon as he gets hit, something turns into him and he just becomes this warrior where he becomes 100% like, you know what? I forget the wrestling. I am just going to go over there and strike my ass off. I am going to literally kick your legs. I am going to strike. I am going to throw my strikes. I am going to constantly become this boxer, He, which he has great boxing. He is just going to constantly just do whatever he can do to literally get those punches back. You know, you you become you're in a firefight with Justin. He is not going to go for a takedown. He's going to trade punches with you, and he can do that all damn night. And that's what I feel like Justin Gage is going to do. I'm not saying that's how he can win because I personally feel like what a lot of other people, what a lot of outlets are saying, how he can win is by wrestling, and that's something that he should definitely utilize. He should definitely use the wrestling. You know, in maybe in maybe not all the time, but maybe enough to where he gets his opponent guessing because um his opponent is more of a striker than a wrestler, but he has a very very high takedown defense. But with that being said, still, if he can utilize some of that wrestling and make it very difficult for Fazeev and make him second guess constantly, because that's what I feel like MMA is always about, especially if you have a great grappling skill, you have great wrestling skill, and you have great boxing skill, that's something that makes um, the other opponent really guess, like, hey, is this guy going to take me down or is he going to stand and strike with me? If you're constantly second guessing, while you're second guessing, your opponent's constantly landing punches. And that's what Justin Gaethje can actually do with his boxing, with his ability to strike, with his ability to take downs, with his ability, you know, to utilize some of his grappling skills that he's always had in his back pocket but never really uses. So now if he can actually use it, he can actually get that victory. Because like I said earlier, you know, Justin Gaethje is always a, a one fight, maybe two fights away from actually gaining another title shot so you know if he can actually not you know try to please the fans not try to look impressive but or no excuse me want to look impressive but not try to please the fans and not try to like you know blow everyone's hair back with a great performance and instead just go out there and win the fight and focus on being champion then i could definitely see justin gaethje winning but if he turns this into a striking war i don't know you might have to give the edge on the other side of the octagon but as far as Justin Gaethje goes, how he could win, it has to be his wrestling. It has to be. You know, as far as him, he might be able to hit harder. Because, again, Justin Gaethje's been in wars. But that is a good thing and a bad thing. Good thing is because he's won against high-experienced fighters. Bad thing is when you go through that many wars, you wear your chin out. You wear your brain out. You wear, you're, you're pretty much getting worn out little by little. So maybe sometimes these shots that you're getting, you might have been able to take in it when you're a little bit more younger. But now the fact that you're a little bit more older and the fact that you've had a lot more wars, it might not, you might not be able to take it as much as well. And this is guy that he's going against is a beast. So my personal opinion the how the how um just to get you could win is by um using his wrestling. If he doesn't, I can see just to get you using some trouble. Now, how can Fazeev win? Well, with that being said, I feel like Fazeev um is a younger guy. He is a definitely definitely a really good striker because again he comes out of Thailand and he's had we've seen some great striking and again he has some really great takedown defense. I believe it was like a ninety percent um takedown defense. <clears throat> that he has, you know, under his resume and such. But with that being said, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be challenging because he's never fought anybody like Justin Gaethje before. He's never fought anybody that is willing to go to war. He's never fought anybody that's been willing to take punches, to give punches. And this is by far the biggest name that he could fight at this time. You know, he's definitely climbing the rankings. You got Dustin Poirier. You got, you know, the Islams, the Charles Oliveras, the Benils. Um, So you got all these big names out there. So this is definitely a big step um, for him. So this step, if he cannot let the pressure get to him, if he's able to um, <clears throat> stop some takedowns that Justin Gaethje might want to try to get in, then I can definitely see this being a good victory for Fazib. I could definitely see that, you know, because he is definitely the primer fighter. He is definitely the younger fighter and he is definitely the fresher fighter, meaning that he's never really been in that many wars. So he's not worn out you know his hands are worn out his chin ain't worn out you know so he might have a little bit more gas in the tank than justin gaethje so with that being said how or excuse me what happens if they lose well if justin gaethje loses it's gonna be tough you know it's gonna be tough because he's only 34 still kind of young 
in the lightweight division, um, it really all depends on him. Because if he loses, I don't see him getting another title shot because he's already had two. He had one against Habib and he had one against Charles Oliveira. And I don't see him wanting to go through the murderer's role again and try to get that another title shot. Um, you know, going through guys like, again, Fazeev or Dustin Poirier and all this and such. Um, or he could. You never know because it seems like Justin Gaethje really enjoys this. He really does enjoy it. You know, he really does enjoy fighting. But if he just... Maybe if he's a little tired because he's been fighting for a very long time and maybe if he's just kind of over it and wants to continue moving on and doing different things, then I don't know. Maybe Justin Gaethje might retire. Maybe Justin Gaethje might call it a day. Or he might just want to go out there and take on some very fun, exciting fights. You know, it's like, hey, I, maybe I, I couldn't get to that championship belt again, but I could still make some money, which he could. You know, I would always pay to see a Justin Gaethje fight, 100%. I will always pay that money. You do you tell me Justin Gaethje's fighting? He can fight anybody, and I'm there. I'm seeing it 100. percent Um, so you never know as far as Justin Gaethje goes. Now, as far as Vaziv goes, um, what happens if he loses? Well, he's still young. He's still young, and like I said, Justin Gaethje is by far the biggest name that he can match up with. You know, there there's, there's no other bigger right now at the moment. You know, I'm sure if he does happen to get that victory, then yeah, the sky's the limit, and there's just more bigger. More bigger and more crazier opponents that he could be going against. And, you know, there there could be more wars ahead of him right now. So with that being said, if he loses, he could rebuild himself. He can look at uh, the tape and say, hey, you know what? I did this wrong. I did that wrong. I need to go back in the training gym and definitely um, fix some, uh, fix a few things and get, a little, get better. He has the time to do that. 100%. There's definitely, definitely no shame on losing to one of the greatest warriors of all time, Justin Gaethje. You know, he was an interim lightweight champion of the world. He has fought for the belt a couple of times. So, yeah, definitely no shame on that. You know, and when you lose, you only get better. 100%. So, now, guys, for my prediction, I definitely got the, unfortunately, I got to go with Justin Gaethje just due to the fact that he has the experience. You know, he has been through the wars. He has been through the war, uh, the the murderous role of the lightweight division. You know, he has fought in the who's who in the lightweight division. And <clears throat> he's actually come on top for, for those fights for a lot of them. You know, nothing against Fazeev, nothing against him. You know, he's still a young, young rising up and coming star. But at the same time, it's just, I feel like the experience, the big stages, I do feel like it might be just a little much too soon, maybe. Um, you never know. Again, you never know when it comes to sometimes, hey, you sometimes you put in the big spot and you can actually get the victory out. But right now, my personal opinion is it might be a little bit too much too soon for Fazeev. And I feel like Justin Gaethje could actually edge this one out if especially he's able to use some of his grappling and able to use some of the, um, you know, take away that 90 percent defense because, hey, let's face facts. At the end of the day, yeah, he has 90% defense, but he hasn't went in there against somebody like Justin Gaethje. He hasn't went in there with high caliber wrestlers um, to actually have that. It's still very impressive, but now he's going in there with, you know, the deep end of the water. He's going down the murderer's row where, you know, you got some really, really um, high level wrestlers. You got Justin Gaethje, you got Ju um, Justin Poirier, you got um, Benio, you got Charles, and you got Islam. So, yeah, there's definitely, definitely a lot up there that where you can test that 90% out. Still, again, very impressive, but I do feel like Justin Gaethje can edge this one out. But guys, let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know what you, who you think you guys got. You got Fazeev, you got Justin Gaethje. Let me know, guys. Like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.